Hey everyone, welcome to another video and in this video we will be talking about the top 10 most asked and common questions during a visa interview for F1. I've gone to the US Embassy twice and I've done my visa interviews twice and both of the interviews lasted less than 40, 40 seconds to 1 minute. Uh, the second one lasted a little bit more and I've created the list of 30 plus questions. In this video we're going to cover top 10 to understand like what my thought process and how it works and why I'm answering the way I am answering and what you can do to get the same same understanding of it. Before we get into the video, there are three things I would like to mention to you. First is only answer what's been asked. Do not over answer things. Second is provide the documents only when asked. Do not be proactive about it. It's a short interview and they will ask you questions and they'll ask for the document if they need it right and third be confident in your answers super important part being confident in your answers will solve most of your problem i know it's it's very intimidating to go to the embassy and answer all of these questions try to be just keep yourself calm everybody's freaking out there just it's just not you literally everybody's freaking out so here are my top 10 questions among these 10 questions i have also given you like the variation of that question the first one is why did you choose to study in the us instead of pursuing educations and then the set like the alternative is what are your plans after completing the degree in the US and how does it align with your ca career aspirations in India. I would like to study in the United States because US has one of the most advanced research facilities and professors to teach the particular course I'm going to do my master's in. It will help me expose myself to advanced education resources, cutting edge tech and will get me great exposure. My long term plan is to start a business of my own in India and this education will aid me with that plan. The second question, how did you decide on this particular university or college and why is it the best fit for your academic goals? If you're, the, the answer is divided into two, right? If you're a research person or if you're going into a management field or if you want to go into the corporate world after. So for the research and thesis based masters, few reasons, United States and the university I'm going, Two is one of the best research universities in the world for few topics, right? Like AI, CS, VR, construction management, machine learning. And you can just like slide in your topic yourself. And I'm particularly interested in working with XYZ professor and their specialization in ABC, like in some random in industry. Um, and that has particularly interested me the most. If you're a management course person, if you want to go to corporate afterwards, I've researched about all the universities offering MEM, MIS, BA course and based on the curriculum and previous opportunities, Alan and I has, have gotten it leaned me towards ABC University. I would like to go into product management or data analytics afterwards and this course will help me do that because of this course or that course or this course, right? Keeping it short. Third question, how do you plan to finance your education and living expenses in the United States? An alternative question to it, what are your plans for funding your education? and living expense in the, in the US, can you provide some documentation to support this? Just notice how they're asking for documentation in this question particularly. Answers, I'm taking a loan of XYZ dollar, which is, you know, 50 lakhs in INR from SBI or Prodigy or HDFC, whatever you want to mention. Plus, I have assistance from my parents as well. My loan will cover most of the education and the remaining will be covered by my parents or my own savings. Here's my loan approval or sanction letter from the lender and the account statement of my parents account to show that I can cover the tuition and living expense. Now, let's say you are covering your own expenses instead of your parents. You can provide your own bank statements and your income tax return if they ask for it. Fourth question, can you demonstrate strong ties to your home country? What assurances can you provide me that you will return after completing your studies? And this is one of the most stressful questions because deep down, a lot of people know that you want to use your OPT and STEM extension. So I've answered it that way. People with some experience, what you can mention is that few reasons uh, I want to come back to India is I have all my family in India. Plus my reasoning behind doing a master's degree is to advance my career in the company I'm working in currently. I already have a verbal offer to rejoin my company after I come back from my master's. And if a better opportunity persists, I would love to take it over in India. Second is the option when people do not have any experiences and you're just graduated, you're going for your master's education. You can say, I would like to use my CPT, OPT and STEM extension because that's provided by the US government for me and be able to get some experience, get a three years of experience. 
I would like to leverage that experience and get a great job offer once I move back to India. I have all my family here and that's my biggest reason to come back. You can also insert that you have a long term plan to start your own business in India. Fifth question, how do you plan to manage the cultural differences and adapt to the life in the United States? Another alternative for this question, uh, are you aware of any cultural lifestyle differences between your home country and the United States? How do you plan to adapt to them? You know, this is very less likely to be asked, but in case it's asked, it's part of moving to any country, any new country after all. While growing up, we have watched a lot of US TV shows like Friends and Office. So I'm a little acclimated to the US culture already. But yes, definitely a lot to learn. I have the understanding uh, that the universities also help international students uh, with group activities to help them learn about the US culture. So I'm looking forward to that. In this way, you're also showing that you have some understanding already, but your university is also going to help you. Um, kind of a merge of both of them, right? Sixth question, what is the significance of your chosen field of study and how it will contribute to the development of your home country? Um, you know, this has to be modified according to you and according to your field and what will work best in your case. So um, I'll give you what I would answer in this case. Construction management helps managing construction projects efficiently with keeping them safe and under budget uh, by maintaining schedules, uh, effective construction techniques. In the longer term, I envision becoming an entrepreneur in the construction industry of India. Basically, the construction industry is in the midst of transformation, which is molding itself to make itself a better regulated uh, for the Indian household. With India attracting global investments from around the world, the construction industry in India needs to employ a lot of innovative technologies and project management strategies which will help it grow. Uh, I strongly believe that a graduate study from Purdue uh, will help me do that and be able to manage my skills better. Now this is really, really particularly relevant to the CM industry, modify it according to yourself and then take it forward. Seventh question, have you applied to any other universities or colleges? If so, what were the reasons of choosing this university over others? Another alternative to this is, have you applied to other universities in the US? If yes, what were the outcomes of this application? Just another wording, right? Now, the way to answer this is, if you have only gotten one admit out of like, let's say 12 or 10 universities you applied to, it might be worth it to like tell them that, hey, I only applied to six universities and I was able to get into this. And of course, I've done my research and that's why I, after researching all of these universities, I realized that these six would be the best fit for me. So even after getting one admit, um, I'm really grateful for it and it will work out. Now, talk about what aspects of the university you like and what made you choose this university or program. Talk about the courses, talk about the curriculum, talk about the professors, do the basic research. I know a lot of students just go off a list and like, go for it, right? They just basically be like, okay, I'm gonna apply to these 10 universities out of the 30 university list I have. But when you're going for a visa interview, please make sure you do your research about the professors, the projects, and understand what is happening at the university you're going for. Eighth question, can you explain any gaps of in your academic history or provide further clarification on certain aspects of your application? Now, I want to clear something here that academic gaps are not the same as um, work experience while you're taking work experience that will be counted as work experience academic gaps is when you're or gaps in your profile is when you're not doing anything at all you're not working you're not studying you're not doing anything at all in this case i took a one year gap so i can answer this i took a one year gap because i think i just after all these years of education my undergrad i wanted to take some break plus um, having some corporate experience and doing the us application wouldn't have been feasible. So I decided I would just focus on my US, US university's application and just go for it. If you have like some personal gap because of your family, you can explain that as well. US is a very accommodating culture. They understand that you want to take some breaks or they understand that it is exhausting and tiring to go through the whole education system. A lot of US students also like take breaks after their 12th class. So it's, it's calm. Do not freak out about it. Question number nine, can you provide more details about the specific program and courses you will be pushing in the US? I can't give you an answer, but again, similar to the question we covered just now, do your own research about the projects and professors and what they're working on. Now the 10th question, have you received any scholarship or financial aid for your studies? If yes, can you explain the terms and condition? 
Now, there are three, four ways to answer it, right? That I've not received any scholarship or assistantship. I've received a scholarship of $5,000 or $10,000 and that's mentioned on my I-20. That will be cut off from my first semester. Or I have received an assistantship and here's an email confirmation or here it is where it says on my I-20 that I will be receiving a monthly stipend plus I will be receiving my tuition fee will be waived off. All of the university will send you something if they are giving you any kind of confirmation that you have gotten a scholarship. So please print out PDF that email and print it out and that will help you achieve it better. There are like 20 more questions. I'm going to leave the guides link in description and you can check it out. All of those answers are there. My thought process is there and you can download it. It's completely free to download. So go check it out. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. And until then, I'll see you in the next one. Take care everyone.